And here we are on QSportsTalk.com, live at Carabas Italian Grill at the Fayetteville Town Center with head coach Jim Beheim. And uh, welcome to those watching and checking out the video feed, coach, <laughs> and then chatting away here in the stream chat. If you have any questions for the coach, you can feel free to add them in, and we'll get to as many as we can. And uh, I'll just start right from the top there, coach. Kevin from Liverpool just says, start Malik Brown. Well, you know, he's playing. He played starters minutes. I mean, he's just not quite ready, maybe, but he, he could start. Um, he's getting better. He he just is a low post power forward. He doesn't, you know, do some other things that we'd like to see. But uh, he's playing a lot. I mean, what did he play the other night? You know, 25, 26 minutes. I mean, he's he's going to play. He's he's earned that. And, uh, you know, but uh, I don't – I haven't given up on our other forwards. I think they've shown spots, some signs of doing some really good things too. So we just got to keep working with him, got to try to get him better. And there's uh, guys over the years that didn't necessarily start. And, you know, Dion Waiter's name comes to, <laughs> comes to mind. And, yeah. You know, as a first round draft pick, and well, he, if you he, play the majority of time, then you're yeah, starters minutes. It's, it's starters minutes, basically. We'll see what happens. We'll see how we progress once we come back up here. Uh, just more kind of a piggybacking on what we we're discussing in the first half hour about uh, Bell trouble rebounding. Just having a well, issues. you know, if he if if Benny, oh, if Benny would rebound him. We're having some problems here, I think. Yeah. But if Benny would rebound better, that would help take some of the pressure off Chris. We can't have them both not rebounding. But, uh, you know, Chris is more of a shooter and a scorer, and that's okay. But he's just – both guys have to get better better on defense. That's really, the I think, the big key. Yeah, we're having a little bit of audio issue here. We can kind of hear uh, – well, just kind of keep yakking away here, Coach. I'm assuming <laughs> people can hear us uh, – on the stream chat, uh, this one here says, read your first book, very good read, Coach. Well, thank you. Yeah, Jack McCallum is a great writer, 30-year writer for Sports Illustrated. He's written a lot of good books, and I thought he did, he did a really, really good job with it. Uh, this one here, uh, Matt wants to know, first, uh, happy holidays, and what's your, uh, well, you're not going to say what your gift is for Mrs. Bayheim on the radio. <laughs> can you hear it? Can you hear it? Coach? I can't hear anything right I, now. I know we're having, a, we're having, all we're hearing is uh, static. Uh, let me see. I'll get to uh, another question here. Uh, why don't we trap uh, the corners like we did five or 10 years ago? The trap. <laughs> well, was... we've tried. We haven't done it very well. That's one of the things with a young team. It's a little harder to get those traps. We actually have gotten some and then let people out of them. So we're not as good. It's a good question. Um, it's something we do work on. We have not really, you know, when you're learning the defenses and you're just trying to play basic good defense, it's hard sometimes to put in traps and a lot of other things because you're just learning the basics for the most part. Uh, let me see here again. Uh, for those joining us here in the stream chat, working through uh, some minor technical issues. You know, uh, Paulie was ill, but he's back now, Coach. But I think he's, you know, I don't think it's possible to give computer equipment what Paulie had, but that might have happened. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, let me see here. Uh, again, from the stream chat, with the aggressive defense he faces, is Joe better off? If he doesn't worry about the three-point line and seeks whatever open shot he can get. Yeah, he's looking for open shots, but, I mean, you know, three's better than two, and, you know, he's shooting a good enough percentage at the three, and uh, it's harder for him to get in around the basket. Or he's, you know, he's small. He's, he's not going to finish a lot around the basket, but he looks for that pull-up, too, and, yeah, that's a good, a good very good point. Uh, around the country, Coach, and you touched a little bit on it in the first half hour with uh, Matt Park regarding Eastern Illinois and that upset win at Iowa. Yeah. And it was up until that game in the past 30 years, <laughs> teams that were 30-point or more underdogs were 0 in 558. Yeah, I mean, I, that was a shocker. I didn't see the game for some reason. I kind of missed it. Then I saw a write-up about it. And, I mean, I was really good this year. It's not like they're not good. I think they shot like eight for 36 or 40 from the three yeah. or something. And, uh, which, but that's, that was a shocking, shocking loss. Nine point game. Wow. But I'll tell you, I'm not that surprised. I'm sure Boston college was a pretty big underdog to Virginia tech last night. 
you know, tech, top 20 team and really playing great basketball. And Boston College lost to Maine at home. Um, I mean, that's a monster upset there. Really big upset. But that's that's what happens in college basketball, I think, <laughs> right now. now. How about the UConn at the 13-0? and 0? They're Yeah, just... and, you know, I watched them, and Georgetown was up 68-62 at UConn the other night with about probably seven or eight minutes to go, and then UConn just blew. Man, they just played great. They got a good team. They got a really good team. They got two big guys. They got shooters. They got handlers. Uh, they're legit. They're they're definitely Got a really good shot. They'll be a number one. I think they'll win the Big East, and I think they'll be a number one seed. They're just really good, and uh, I think they'll be hard to beat. They are not going to lose much. <laughs> Looking at the rest of their schedule and the rest yeah. of, the, of the conference. You know, the, the Big East is still good, but it's not as good as it's been, and uh, I think they can – I think they could go through that league and, and win. They're, they're good, really good. Uh, Matt wants to know, would Chris uh, would Chris Bell be playing the two if Joe wasn't no, here? No, he can't. He's not a guard. He doesn't have those skills. He doesn't have ball skills. He's a shooter and a small forward. That's his position. He would not be playing the two. Could he down the road someday? Maybe. That's a maybe. Uh, this one here, uh, I wonder if uh, Coach... Heard the analytics guy on Orange Nation today, and what is uh, what his thoughts on what he said? I didn't hear the analytics guy. I don't know what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you could maybe paraphrase in, in like a you know you gotta give us one a paragraph, uh, but just in general, I would say what he should say is uh, we're not shooting the three very well, so you could okay. take fewer of those maybe, um, and then uh, I think uh, you know we're good. Getting around the, when we get to the basket area and get it to Jesse or get a drive, I think we're pretty good there. That part of analytics is, is good. But we, we've got to get some more production out of our forwards. I think that's the bottom line. Uh, this one here from Ryan. Uh, he says, uh, Coach, uh, Pistol Pete Maravich averaged 44 points a game at LSU despite there being no three point line. Yeah. A coach went back and watched every single one of his games and concluded that Maravich was making about 13 threes a game. Wow. Do you think Pistol Pete doesn't get enough recognition in well, college he, basketball? He was a great player. I saw him play once. He's just was in person. He was a, a phenomenal player. He, he could handle it, you know, shoot it, uh, pass it. I mean, he, he was a, a spectacular player. You know, good size. I mean, he really handled the ball, shoot it from anywhere. Uh, I'm surprised he made that. I'd say he probably made seven or eight threes a game. That's that's a it's lot. It's even more impressive. Yeah, he was really good. He was good in the NBA. He just, you know, he just he could score. He could score with anybody. A phenomenal, a phenomenal player. One kind of a unique player. Not many guys. <laughs> you say, yeah, he's like Pete Maravis. No. <laughs> They're not like it. Tough to compare. Well, in another sport, speaking of legends, and we had re- heard yesterday that Franco Harris had yeah. passed away unexpectedly right before the big 50th anniversary of that immaculate yeah. uh, reception game. Uh, I remember watching that. I mean, back in the day, in 1972, there was only one game on, yeah. and there was nothing else to do. So <laughs> everybody watched that game, and yeah. the next day, that's all everybody was talking about was, was that play. Spectacular. You know, but he was a great football player. He's remembered for that play, but he was a, he was a great football player, part of, what, four Super Bowl teams, four, yeah. four championship teams. Yeah, he was, he was a great player. Uh, let me see here. Going back to the uh, analytics guy, he said his top five rated players as Jesse, Joe, Judah, Malik, and Justin. He says the starting lineup has a worse point differential than the second most used in the lineup, which has JT in for Bell. Yeah, I mean, you have to look at the, he had a big, big game. That was one of them. And then the uh, the comeback game uh, against Pittsburgh changes that too. But our forwards were historically bad in that game. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't argue with that. I think that uh, Chris gives is a little better shooter than Justin, but Justin's has played well too. Um, it's it's I mean it's a coin trip, and Malik has been better than Benny overall, um, but he hasn't he hasn't been that 
dramatic. It's a little bit different, but uh, yeah, that's, that's I wouldn't argue with that at all. And part of that, John Bowl was doing more things than some guys were, and then he had a couple bad games, and now Quadir's coming off a real good game. The danger when you use your bench a lot is that oh, oh this guy's good, and then the next game he's not so good. You know, you you're trying to. F- based on what you see every day in practice over two months in games, this is who we think are the best players, you know, and mm. sometimes they don't quite produce that. And then you have to think about making some changes and you do, you do, you just maybe not start the guy, but he plays the most. So that's what you try to do in those situations. Uh, did you watch the Michigan, uh, North Carolina? Yeah. Game? Yeah. A little chippy, a little feisty. Yeah, well, that's going to happen. That's going to happen. Some of that stuff, but you know, North Carolina is really good. They're going to have some moments. They're, they get, probably get a little bored. But, uh, you know, that's a team that was a player away from winning the national championship, and they're, the key guys are all back. So they're going to be tough. Kind of a, a bizarre stat because sports loves stats, Coach. But uh, this one had to do with Michigan. Since Juwan Howard has been the head coach since, what, 2019? Uh, uh, they've The team's had 39 technical fouls. I don't know what to make of that. It was just a stat I heard on I don't know. the sports. I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> is, it, is that high or an average? Uh, or, is it, or if you looked at every... Well, I think <laughs> in that time we've had... Uh, yeah. Benny had his little episode. Um, I haven't had a technical in a long time, I don't think. I think it's been years since I've had a technical. But I don't think that we've had more than five <laughs> technicals in that time period. In that time frame. Yeah. Uh, this one, do you have a favorite holiday meal, song, or tradition, Coach? No, I just like to have everybody home for the holidays. It's great. I mean, it's just, it's, it's fun. I like to sit around during the day and see everybody. I like to have appetizers, different things, and then, you just know, nibble around whatever, around. yeah, whatever that may be. And then, you know, just have everybody together. That's great. We'll have... Everybody but Jimmy, he's, he can't get home from Greece, but uh, everybody else will be here, so we're I'm looking forward to that. Somebody this morning, uh, when you're promoting this show tonight, had sent a text in about when the kids were little. Want to know? Did you have you ever dressed up like Santa Claus? I don't think so. I not, no, not even when they're little. I don't think I ever did. No, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, let me see here. Uh, somebody wants to know: Is it true that DC once missed a Christmas practice? Yes, he did. He told me he was going to miss too. Oh, he was saying, he was, I said, you have to be back on like probably the 26th. And he said, I can't, I'm coming back the 27th. I said, you can't do that because everybody's coming back to me. Well, I'm going to, and I said, well, you're not going to start then. You're going to, that's the way it will be. And we were going to Providence. It was a TV game. He said, okay. And then we get to Providence and, he, and he's not starting. Now he's mad. I said, well, I told you, you know, you want to go home. You stayed home the next day. Everybody else was here. So. And then the game started. We played really well, so I didn't even have to put him in for a while. Now he was really mad. By the time he got in there, he was furious. I think he had 16 points and 16 rebounds and blocked about six shots. He was furious. And uh, I said, "Okay, well now you come back for practice that time." All right. But he was, yeah, he was mad. <laughs> uh, see, someone we were talking about the the technicals. Uh, was it the last technical when you tossed your jacket? Probably. Did, probably, right? I guess. I might have gotten I, That was, yeah, maybe. That was a while ago, too. I can't even remember how far that, that, six, that was. I remember now, six years ago? Oh, at least. Seven? Yeah, I would think so. And I think, didn't uh, Neil Gold yeah. buy that it, it, buy for it. a fundraiser? Like 14000 for, for our fundraiser, for our foundation, yeah. That was great. <laughs> uh, someone suggesting Tom Izzo got a technical last night for wearing an ugly Christmas sweater. <laughs> I, I just think it was it. more than a sweater. <laughs> well, I remember that, the the Big East game, whatever year it was, in Madison Square Garden with the St. John's and uh, Georgetown, and uh, John Thompson came out wearing the same sweater as, <laughs> Louis. as Louis, <laughs> Louis Cardinal. Yeah, those were the days. <laughs> uh, around the, uh, other sports coach, New York Yankees, making uh, Aaron Judge, naming him the team captain. Well, uh, he should. I mean, for the, <laughs> that's no surprise there. Well, everybody knows he is anyway. But, yeah, if you give him 300 million, whatever, $400 million, I guess you can. <laughs> uh, let me see other topics around uh, the world of sports. Did you watch any of the World Cup final? I did. I watched the whole final. And uh, uh, I, I love soccer. I mean, soccer is big. 
I don't know what the numbers are, but I think 20, 10, 20 times more people watch the World Soccer Final than watch football, watch the Super Bowl, right? I think, I it's think it was like a, a billion people <laughs> is whatever the number was I saw after the fact. It, that watched. I, don't, I don't doubt it a bit. And that's probably not counting like in Argentina where there's 2,000 watching on every TV. You know, there's <laughs> one true. TV and there's 100 people watching it. <laughs> that's I a mean, good point. I guarantee in Argentina... <laughs> Everybody, 90% of the people are watching that game. 90% in, are watching that game in Argentina. They, they guarantee it. Like in the Super Bowl here, there's probably, what, 30% or 40% watching it? 90% are probably watching it in, in Argentina. I mean, it's crazy. They love that sport. It's a, and it's a great sport. It really is. And that was one of the great games I've ever seen. Jimmy was watching it over in Greece and he said the best game I've ever seen in any sport. I, th I, I really think it might have been. Right at the top. And then the way, again, the same way as the Syracuse National Championship penalty. game, the penalty kicks at the end, and it's that's ultimate drama in sports right there. That's pressure. Well, I wanted Messi to win. I, I, he's always been my favorite player, and I thought they were going to win. And then the guy takes a bad penalty, puts his arm out. Oh, it was terrible. But then they, they pulled it out. I mean, it that goaltender is going to be whatever he wants the rest of his life in Argentina. <laughs> he's getting like if he wants a TV or if he wants a car, all just, he's got to do is walk, walk in, in and say, "I like that car." And he's, you got it. You take it. Just take it. Take it right there. <laughs> <laughs> and can Here's we help piece. you? And can, <laughs> and can we give you anything else? <laughs> uh, so here's a question, uh, Coach. What uh, led to the technicals and ejection from that? Exhibition game. That was like 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. That was or longer. Well, the, it was a local guy, and he doesn't ref our games, but he ref that game, and I was mad at the other ref, and so I'm yelling at the other ref. And the local guy came over and says, You can't do that. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to him. He said, Well, you can't do that. I said, I'm just talking to him. Don't do that. And then he gave me a technical. I said, <laughs> I'm not talking to you. <laughs> talking to the other guy. You know, and uh, that was bad. But uh, yeah, that might be. The last, I don't know. I haven't gotten too many. It doesn't do any good to get them, so I don't get them too much. Uh, this question here, what is your favorite conference away game to play in terms of fan support? Our fans? Yeah, we, we get great support in New York and Georgetown. We play down there. Um, and we've played in Florida in the past. We've had really good support in Miami or Florida State. We go there. There's been a lot of Syracuse fans there uh, in those places, but... Uh, yeah, we, our fans are good. They're, they they try to get to places. They can't get tickets at Duke, or they'd come there. And, you know, but we, we have great support when we go on the road. Our fans have been great, always been great. Uh, Steve, in the stream chat here from North Syracuse, says that George Hicker got tossed from the stands by Jim Burr for calling him Higgins. Yeah, he made, <laughs> Burr, that, you can't do that to Burr. He, he, his ego was way too big for that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a couple of NBA notes, uh, Coach uh, Damian Lillard, now the all-time leading scorer for the Portland Trailblazers this past week, passing Clyde the Glide. Clyde the Glide. Yeah, he's yeah, he's good. The, Jeremy Grant's having a great year there. The Trailblazers are doing okay. Uh, yeah, NBA is interesting. There's some Celtics were cruising along, and then they lost a couple right in a row. To Orlando, I think at home, and then Orlando's won six or seven. The Knicks won seven straight, or something like that. And it's kind of wide open. The Golden State Warriors can't beat anybody on the road, and it's an interesting league. Lakers can't beat anybody uh, at all. At the end of the day, I, I still think the Bucks, uh, maybe Celtics, two of the better teams in the league, but. It, the Nets are starting to play better, and the six Sixers are starting to play better. The East might have the best teams right now. Uh, in Denver, Nikola Jokic, <laughs> the triple double that he had the other night, forty. What was it? it was like forty-seven, twenty, twenty-seven, and ten, or yeah. something like forty, twenty-seven, and ten. Yeah, he's good. He's really good. He's a really good player. He knows how to play. He uses his body. He can shoot. He's a great passer. He's he's really good. <laughs> Him and Giannis are the, just two phenomenal players. Embiid's good, too. 
You look at that. There's three guys that are not from the United States. <laughs> Whoever thought that would happen. Three, right. three best players in the world right now. Those three guys you can make the case for easily. Whatever happened to uh, the guy, the one guy that was picked ahead of Carmelo Darko? He's got a farm in Yugoslavia or Slovakia someplace. He didn't, never just, made it. Never made it? Never panned out? No, never made it. He was a good warm-up player, but he, that he was it. shoot. That's it. That's a bad pick. <laughs> Did you watch any of the, the, the PNC golf last week with the, like Tiger and yeah, Charlie yeah, and, and yeah. VJ and his son? It was fun watching those guys. VJ's son's really good. He really played good. John Daly's son's really good. He played really good. It's fun to watch that. It really is. Tiger and Charlie were limping around there. <laughs> they both had bad feet. Oh, my gosh. It, looked, it was painful. <laughs> you know, your left foot is where you land, and you putting all your weight over there when you're swinging that's not easy yet i think tiger's swing is okay but he can't walk i don't know why he wouldn't take it he should petition to take a cart and play on the tour with a cart because he needs it he could i think he could get to where he'd be pretty competitive but if he has to walk say i don't think gonna can, i don't think he can play around 72 holes i mean maybe he can but i i don't think so uh, somebody wants to know your thoughts on Jeremy Grant's NBA career so far. Unbelievable. He just he got that start in Philadelphia. He wasn't quite ready, but they played him because they were that experimental, <laughs> whatever they called it. The, what do they call it in Philly? They called it the, uh, the process. The process. process. Trust yeah, the process. process. <laughs> and he got to play because they didn't have anybody, and he got to be a, he's a very good player. He's making $60 million. He might get $90 million. His next contract. So, yeah, he's he's Not really bad. playing great. How about this thoughts on the dwindling importance of college bowl games? Well, I mean, there's two games that count. The rest, players aren't playing. I mean, it's some benefit probably, but, I mean, what do we have? How many guys that aren't playing? I know four had declared for the, you know, Sean Tucker and uh, Bergeron. Yeah. And a couple of the guys. Yeah, I mean. That's just, and every team is in the same boat. Yeah. It's just, and yet they all can play in the big game. <laughs> yeah. But they won't play in the other ones. No, they're not playing. It's kind of, I don't even watch them. I don't even follow them now. Uh, from uh, Kevin, what's up with the uh, bowl, John Bowl? Yeah, he had a couple of big games, but he's having some issues with his books. He's trying to get straightened out. Hopefully he can. Uh, let me see here. Uh, this one here, going back to the golf. Ryan says uh, Charlie even falls like tar Tiger. <laughs> like <that. laughs> Taking a I'll swing. Tell you what, the he's got a great swing. I watched their swing side by side. <laughs> Almost a mirror image, really. It's crazy. Thirteen-year-old, how he can swing at the bat, at the golf ball. It's and crazy. And just to see him leaning on his club, like <laughs> next to him, it's 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 funny. It's like watching twins. Uh, see, uh, one more topic, topic here, Coach. In the, had just seen because of your involvement in you know Olympic sports, obviously with with the Team USA, the House of Representatives today passed the uh, Equal Pay Bill for U.S. women's athletes, equal pay and benefits for athletes, Olympic athletes, regardless of gender. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't honestly, I don't follow that that much in terms of. How much they get? Panel soccer got some things done, and I think they got a boost in, yeah. in what they're getting. But uh, yeah, I don't know. In track, I know there's a lot of money in track. I know yeah. that. I, I don't know what the numbers are, but to go to Europe, some of the like if you're a world class sprinter, you get like a hundred grand or something to run someplace. I think or more. Yeah. And you know, Simone, you know, Biles was getting big money. So yeah, I mean, they're they should get the money. They should, you know, get it. I think, um, you know, tennis players, I think tennis is getting more equal to pay than mm -hmm. it used to be. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's all what should happen, really. I don't see. I think in some sports it's not economical to pay the same, and, you know, that just the, the, depending on the. The numbers don't the numbers don't add up that way. But I think in the Olympic sports, yeah, I think women's soccer wins they draw big crowds uh, they probably don't make the tv money maybe although they could but they they definitely should 
beginning. Uh, would your uh, would be your your uh, dream force him to play in golf someday when you're able to you know when you're when you're uh, retired and out golfing, coach? Uh, what, what would be your 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 dream force him? The three guys you'd like to play with? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I'm a big Tiger Woods fan. I always have been. You know, I like to play golf. If they were all in their prime, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like. To, oh, I just lost something here. Uh, I'd yeah, like, I think we might be. What? I'm not hearing anything anymore here. I'm so. not. Oh, there it is. Well, if they were all in their prime, I'd like to play with Tiger Woods, Ben Hogan, and uh, Jack Nicholas. Probably those. Those would be. That would be a not a bad. That'd be a, not a bad foursome. If I could get four of them, and I'd probably want to get Bobby Jones. You know, that'd be that'd be. A, you know, it's, <laughs> those. I mean, if you really look at golf, you have to say Bobby Jones was the best player when he was there, and then Hogan. And then Nicholas and then Tiger Woods. I think they're the four best players that we've had. And you can argue about which one was the best, but I mean I think those are the four best from their each one from their era. I mean that's pretty pretty good pretty good players. Well, with that, uh, Coach Ryan and uh, Matt and others saying uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to you, yep. best wishes uh, to the team, and have a great uh, yep. Holiday and Christmas and say hi to the family. And same to them and everybody listening around the, these different. I know it's hard to keep up. I don't even know where we are. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know who's actually listening. All I know is Jimmy's in Greece and he watches every game and every football, every basketball, baseball. You watch Cornell Colgate today over there. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't watch those if you, unless you went to the game. True. 20 years ago. Now you can watch them anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. It's just Cornell Meet Colgate today down there. Colgate six and seven. I guess they played their game against us, and they, they just <laughs> forgot to. They had to keep playing forgot to show the rest up to the year. But uh, yeah, Cornell's good. They're eight and three now, nine and three maybe. There, that was a good win for us. There, we were in a little trouble with against them, and we tightened it up and played pretty good. Matt wants to know: Is this more fun on on this than on the on the radio? Well, like doing doing this the video? Is easier probably. I think so. I think it's more fun. Just do the questions, and there's not that many callers on the radio. It's so just different is, people. This is how they interact now. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Coach, like we'll see you in two weeks. Yep. Merry Christmas. Yep. See you back here in two weeks at All the right. Carabas on the QSportsTalk.com, and uh, go Orange. Thanks, everybody.